everyone and welcome back to the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast near Chichester. And today we are doing part two of the sculptural poppy head tutorial. Um, so if you're joining us on part two, have a look at part one. Um, it was published a few weeks ago. Um, I've now had time to dry my um, demonstrators and get them through the bisque firing. So this um, was the poppy head that I was making on the last video um, and as you can see it's now bisque fired um, and the craft crank clay that I use goes this lovely peach colour which is really not terribly um, Mm, it's a bit insipid isn't it but anyway that's what colour it comes out when it's bisque fired and I also finished off the other two so this was the baby um, that I dem was demonstrating on and I've, I've put some spines on there and I've popped a closed top on the top of this one with some spines and then the medium sized one I used the um, the head that we, the, the plate that we uh, made in the last video on there and then used the pearl necklace um, sprig to make the spines on this one. So I actually have the set of three and they're all different. So they're quite nice when they're different. One open one, one closed one, one with the, with the, um, the pearl uh, necklace spines makes just makes them a little bit different so they're not all the same. So before I start I just wanted to run through some of the comments um, that I had from the tutorial, the poppy head tutorial um, video and I'm very pleased to say that a couple of you have even sent me pictures. How lovely of you, you're so wonderful you YouTubers. And Joan, hello, here she is sending me pictures of the poppy head she made how fantastic is that that came on the email i tell you i was so excited to get it It was lovely thank you joan very much appreciated um and also share you sent me some pictures on instagram of the poppy heads that you made and you liked the first one so much that you made two more so you now have a set of three and i'm thrilled absolutely thrilled that you posted those pictures to me on instagram so anybody else that's having a go either email me the links for my um email are below in fact my website will be on the um upper tagline but do look at the links because you can always um email me um, or indeed pop it on Instagram, which is the dot pottery dot corner. Um, so just a few little um, uh, messages that I had from people. And I just love to share them with you because I love them. I just love it when you when you when you make a take take time to send a message through. So Marianne, Jana and Linda, um, Linda from Oklahoma. Um, say they can't wait to give it a try. So girls, if you've done it, send me a picture. Um, Lisa said that the glass for it sounds interesting. So we're going to be dealing with that in a minute. So everything's laid out ready for, in this tutorial to do that. Um, Margaret's in Australia. She's got better weather than we have. It's freezing cold here, hence the big jumper. Um, Catherine and Tammy, who are both from, is it Vashon Island in Washington state? Um, so how funny is that? Two people viewing from the same place. I wonder if they know each other. Um, Tony said that she really enjoyed it and she couldn't wait for them to come out of the kiln. So here they are. Um, Katie Walters and Jessica from Pacifica and Janice in New Zealand. And I mean, you know, there's, there's loads. Claire Bradbury said that Charlie was cute. Thank you. He is a cutie, but he's a bit of a grumpy old whatnot. Um, Kay in Tasmania said she was hoping it was our last lockdown and I'm hoping it's your last lockdown too. Goodness knows we could do with some uh, some relief from it, couldn't we? Um, Tom Potter, whether he's called Tom Potter or whether he's called Tom and he's a potter, don't know, from North Carolina, said that he had enjoyed the video. And thank you so much, Tom, for, for saying such lovely things about presentation and, and videos that you've watched. So I appreciate I appreciate your comments. And my, my lovely Freddie Moretti in Florida. Hello, Freddie. You're my favourite. No, I shouldn't say that, should I? But you are. Um, and Jackie from Canada said she was up in the night hoping for new content from me. So um, I'm assuming that you might be of a certain age, a bit like me and us, us sort of slightly middle-aged women 
find it difficult to sleep. So I'm hoping that uh, Jackie wasn't using it as an insomnia <laughs> cure, but there we are. Um, Maureen Rose said that she'd like to come to the studio for some tuition. So Maureen, when the studio's open, I would love to welcome you to the studio. So as I say, just brilliant. There's far too many to mention, and I know that there are loads of other comments. I'm really grateful. Thank you so much. It's just great to have have the feedback and uh, you know share this with you. So Sarah, stop yakking. Here we go. So on these poppy heads, what I tend to do is oxide. Now um, I have done. There is another video on the channel about the difference um, between the oxides. So um, copper oxide cobalt oxide, red iron oxide, etc. and how to apply them. So if you're not familiar with oxides, have a look at that video because it's quite, breaks it down a little bit more than I'm going to do on this one. So most of these um, poppy head examples that I have, have been literally just copper oxided. So as you can see, this is it in its bisque state in this sort of horrible peach colour. When it's fired, when this craft crank clay is fired up to glaze temperature, which for me is um, 1230 degrees C, then it goes um, this sort of rather nice sort of stony biscuit colour. So it's a much better colour. It doesn't stay, thankfully, it doesn't stay this peach. Um, and then I have just put copper oxide over the top and the copper oxide is the bit that's gone black. OK, so depending on how much copper oxide you put on, will depend on how thick the colour is. So this one, as you can see, I mean, this has been splattered with underglazes, which I also do. Um, but this one has got practically no copper on it at all at the bottom here. And I've basically put the copper just on the spines at the top and let it run down. So it depends how dark you want them to look. Um, if you want to go really, really dark, then obviously add more copper. And this one is almost black. I mean, it's exactly the same clay, same clay body, but because it's had so much copper applied, it has almost gone black. So you can vary uh, the outcome of your poppy heads by the amount that you apply. Now, this open seed pod which hasn't been made into a poppy, which I put the spines um, right the way round. This one is, is copper and chrome. So chrome oxide is this green colour. Um, and I'm not sure that you'll be able to see particularly well, but there are areas where you can see that the chrome has come down um, in between the um, spines. So I've mixed the copper and the chrome on this one. If I turn it slowly, you just might be able to see the detail on that. Okay, so today we're going to do copper because that is what I usually do. Um, and the tops, as you can see, are... Um, this is glass, it's not glaze. Um, so I use glass on the top of my poppy heads and I love the way that it organically goes down. But we'll talk about that in a minute when we come to doing that part. So in the first instance, very quickly, um, copper oxide comes in powdered form. Um, so, you know, it's not very nice um, in this powdered form. So if you are mixing up oxides, do wear a mask, okay? So um, in the way that I store it is I use jam jars only because they're so easy to use, aren't they? I mean, you know, you, everybody's got old jam jars. Um, and I have dedicated oxide brushes. So, you know, I don't use these brushes, these oxide brushes for my glaze work. So I keep the brushes separate. So if I'm oxiding, I'm using these brushes and not my glaze brushes. And then what I do, in fact, I've just shaken that one, is I, I store them in these um, jam jars. And as you can see, they completely split. So the water has split away from the powder in the bottom. And you have to keep oxides moving 
in water, keep them suspended in the water. Otherwise, what you'll be applying to your poppy head is water and there won't be any oxide in it. Um, so it doesn't mix is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't dissolve in the water like a glaze powder would, you know, kind of dissolve in the water. The oxide powder, it just sits in suspension. So you have to keep the oxide moving. And then to give you an idea of how much I've mixed. So there's a little bit in there, probably what an inch worth in the in the bottom of this jam jar. That's probably half a sort of a, a heaped teaspoon of oxide powder in there. So you don't need a lot of it. Um, I find it easier to make the solution slightly weaker. And if I want a darker colour, then I'll add layers um, so that I'm not putting on a great big black coat of oxide, which will come out really dark. So I don't like them if they're too dark. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this copper oxide on the poppy head. And I like to highlight the spines slightly more than the actual body of the poppy head itself. So as you can see on this one, um, on the beads particularly, it's particularly good because it kind of holds in between the um, bead detail. Um, so there's, there's a reasonable amount of copper on there. Um, and that's how I like to do it. I like to sort of highlight the spines um, and then leave the rest of it a little bit less covered. So I'm going to put my glasses on because you know me, blind as a bat. Right, so here we are, oxiding brush, oxiding suspension. Now, as I say, keep it moving. So you need to make sure that that powder is suspended in the water. And then all I do is touch the brush and it almost goes on its own because, because it's in the water. I'm not brushing it on, I'm just laying it, okay? So I'm not, I'm not scrubbing it in like you would with a paintbrush. If you do, it comes out cloudy and it's not very attractive. So what I try to do, each time I put my brush in, I'm making sure that the suspension is, is mixed, okay? So don't leave it between applications, keep stirring. Um, and I'm loading my brush up with the water, which has the suspension in it, and I'm just going round and literally, I'm almost dripping it on. I'm not trying to be too careful with it. I just want to just get some on the spines in the first instance, so that it kind of has a little bit of color on the spines. And the other thing that I tend to do only through ease is I don't generally take the colour right the way down to the bottom. I quite like the way that it fades um, as it goes down. And I'm also just making sure that I've gone up underneath the petals. And I'm wearing an apron today, as you'll see, one of my lovely um, split fronted potter's aprons. Do have a look at my Etsy shop. Um, they are on there. Uh, well, a couple of them are. Um, so I'm just watching my clothing with um, oxides because they do stain. So be careful if you're out there. Um, make sure you've got an apron or a cover or something on. And likewise for the table. I've actually put a table, one of these plastic tablecloths on um, because it, it does stain. And if you're using a formica top or, you know, a worktop or something, it will stain. So be careful. Um, so I'm just, again keeping it working down to on the spines and you'll see that it will find its own way down your head so it's it's kind of, it kind of tracks its own way it all looks a bit of a mess at the moment um, now on the on the open-headed poppy I obviously can't put glass on here because it will literally just drip off. So I'm going to outline the edges of the petals or whatever you want to call them so that I have some detail on here. Again, I don't want I don't want it to be too black. 
uh, right the way across the whole thing, but I can just pick out a little bit of the um, the veins or whatever on those a little bit so that it goes down just a little bit into the throat otherwise it's going to be quite plain so I can just manipulate my oxide and again you'll see that I'm not brushing I'm tapping let me hold that up so you can see right okay so I'm just trying to get some of the oxide to go down into the throat so that it's not too um, naked on that particular section okay now also whilst I'm holding that up be quite useful to say there on this petal is a very nice black bit that's quite thickly black that will make one of those nice sort of darker um, sort of black sections so that's what I'm looking for and what I don't want to do is go back over that and disturb it because it will smudge and then it doesn't look quite so nice okay so again I'm keeping the suspension moving I'm just going to add a bit more to the ends of the petals themselves so that they come out slightly darker um, as you can see, I'm not really worrying about it splashing over the rest of the the head itself because it, it that all gives it character. So if it splashes and makes dots and stuff, don't worry about it. That that makes it pretty good actually. I rather like it when it's like that. And indeed, um, you know, I do literally just fling it on. It's as simple as that. But what as the most important thing is not to rub it because what you don't want to do is to um, have it so that it's rubbed across the surface because it's not very nice. Um, and then I'm going to go over where I want that black to be more prominent. Sorry, do it this way around. So where I want there to be more um, detail, I'm going over, move you out of the way, or you get too splashed. I'm going over um, again with another layer. Okay, so I'm just running the brush, hardly touching the poppy at all. Um, and also it would be useful to note at the moment that because it is so cold and I am adding a reasonable amount of water um, with this oxide I will leave this for a few days before I fire it in the kiln because what I don't want to do is to have it in the kiln with all this water in it um, so it does need to dry before it goes in the kiln so I'm just going over where I want it to be slightly darker and like I say I'm not really being too careful about where that goes and if it ends up a little bit splodgy all the better to be honest um, and then if you just if you bend down and have a look underneath because quite often you'll find that you've completely missed sections underneath because you can't see what you're doing so just have a have a look at it in the round and make sure that you're happy with the oxide coverage that you have all right and sometimes, like I say, less is more because if you do too much, it will become too black and then it doesn't look quite so nice when they're done. And again, I'm just checking up under these um, petals and make sure that I've got at least some oxide right up under those petals. Right, so generally speaking, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to try and pick it up without smudging. So you can see that some of the oxide is darker. Okay, so where it is much darker, it will come out blacker. Um, and across the top, I want the um, petals to show. So I have used a little bit more on the edges of the petals at the top. And don't forget to put some down in the throat, otherwise they look a bit odd when they're light in the throat. Now. Um, I could leave it completely just with oxide on it 
um, and that would be fine. But actually, I quite like the fact that copper oxide goes green when it is, as we know, covered in a glaze. So this particular poppy head that we used for the example in the last video um, has very slight bits of green on it. Um, I hope you can see that on there. If I tilt it, maybe you'll be able to see it a bit better. Um, and that has happened because I have put, actually you can see it on the bottom of that there, okay? So it's not, it's quite subtle, but it's enough to make it have a little bit of colour. As you can see on the top, there's a little bit of green colour on there. And that has been achieved by popping on um, some clear, transparent, sorry, transparent glaze. Now I have a bucket of transparent glaze and I've just taken a little bit out just so that I'm not using a great big bucket on this video. Um, and same um, theory applies. Try not to put your brush on that oxide because if you put your brush on the oxide and the oxide goes on your brush and you dip it into your transparent and then you put your transparent back in the bucket, you're going to have a bit of a problem. So be careful not to um, get the oxide on your brush. And here I'm literally just going to sprinkle, sorry, turn that round to you so you can see it going on, over the top of some of the oxide. So some bits on the top, some on the spine, over the top of the black, and which will turn green, okay? So these open poppy heads, so the ones with the open centre, because you can't decorate them with the glass like we're going to do in a minute on the others, um, you know, actually they're quite nice if they have a little bit of colour. Sometimes I do it with um, transparent glaze, Sometimes I do it with a toothbrush and um, underglazes. You can do it either way, whichever way you want. Let your creativity do your own thing. Make them your own. Um, and, you know, have fun with it. Have a go. It's, um, you know, it, they turn out different every time. So, again, you'll think, my God, she's making an awful mess of that. But actually, when it comes out, you'll see what, ha what has happened because the, the places where the clear glaze is should turn the copper oxide green. And I just want a bit of colour. I don't want it to be green, um, but I do want a bit of colour on it because it hasn't got any glass. Um, I could put a glaze on it. I personally don't like my seed heads to be glazed because... I think they look better when they're in their natural state in the garden. So um, some of the students, when they've made them, and you'll have seen them coming out on the kiln opening videos. So if you haven't seen those, have a look at the kiln opening videos. Some of the students have glazed them in the past. For me, I like them to be in the raw. I like this biscuit, this sort of stone colour. It looks nice outside. It's quite natural. OK, so that one is done. And um, I will, as I say, wait a few days for that to dry before I put it into um, the kiln for glaze temperature firing. So I'm just going to move this one out of the way so that we're not knocking it over. Quick tidy. And then I'm going to do exactly the same process again. Um, I'm going to use this little one. OK, so this is the little baby. You'll see on this one that the top is fairly dish shaped and that's quite important um, in terms of the glass because taking um, this glass up to glaze firing temperatures I should explain that I used to do stained glass so I used to work with glass um, and I used to do fused glass and slumped glass and all the rest of it and then went back to pottery because it was my first love. Pottery was my first love and it will be my last. Um, uh, so, um, but I thought to myself that I'd try and incorporate the glass into the pottery because actually it's quite nice to 
use a different medium and it makes things more interesting. So I have been left with, from those days, long ago, lots of um, little jars of, this is called glass frit. Now you don't have to use glass frit, um, it just so happens that I have glass frit so that is what I use. Um, you can use confetti glass, so this is what they call confetti glass where it's literally just very, very, very thin um, bits of glass. Um, those, those are very good. Um, you can use um, bottles. Um, so for instance, if you have a blue Harvey's Bristol cream um, bottle, you can use that. You can use wine bottles. Um, my advice to you is if you're going to use that type of glass, only use one type of glass. So don't mix a green glass bottle glass with blue glass bottle glass because the two glass, um, they may not have the same coefficient and they may have things that in them that will make it crack. So try to use one type of glass if you're going to do that. You can buy um, glass for it quite um, cheaply on the internet. So you could get yourself a few little pouches if you're going to have a go. Um, so this uh, is clear glass for it and this is opaque glass for it. So in other words, clear glass is what you can look through without it being distorted. And opaque glass, you can't look through. It's, um, it's got more um, white in it, if you like, and then it means that you can't look through it. So I use a combination of both. So I'm just going to very quickly Put the oxide onto this poppy head just very quickly and um, as I'm going to put glass on the top I'm just going to do the very edges of this poppy head just to pick out the edge of the um, top because I don't want to put a lot of oxide on the bit where the glass is going to go because the oxide will change the colour of the glass. So um, when I'm using glass on the tops, I literally just do the petal edges because I don't want that oxide to get into there. And then this time I'm just going to very, very quickly do the same as before. I'll do it this way around, you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just running letting the oxide run down the spine and you can spend more time doing that indeed I'll finish that off in a minute so on the top of here I want to keep it fairly clear there is a little bit on there but that will be fine okay so the other thing to bear in mind when you're using glass is that it will flow unpredictably um, I don't think I've ever done one that has um, melted and come all the way down all the sides because if you imagine when this is sat in the kiln unless you are a particularly pedantic person then you make sure that it's absolutely level um, all of these cutouts will be at different levels and it's only where the glass can escape in its liquid form um, through these cutouts that the glass is going to go down. Now, huge warning, huge Felicia Beaker warning, you know, wah, wah, wah. Please, please use massive cookies underneath your, um, underneath your poppy heads if you're going to use the glass. Because this, you know, I was saying earlier about the foot being slightly sacrificial. As you can see on this one, the glass has dripped beautifully and it looks amazing, but when it came off of the um, kiln prop, obviously there's a great big pool of glass underneath it. So as that glass has come down, it's fused this foot onto the cookie in the kiln. So please make sure that you use very large dish shaped cookies underneath your pieces and they they must be able to be thrown away because you won't be able to use them again once the glass has gone on it so please be careful um, use some trashy old clay that you've reclaimed and isn't much use for anything else to make yourself some big um, dish shaped 
you know, very, very, you know, flat, but with a with a rim around them to stop the glass flowing off. OK, so be careful because, oh, let me tell you how many times I've dremeled glass off of kiln shelves. Mm, quite a few. So here we are with our poppy head. And um, as you can see, it's not um, enormously level. And I can slightly work out from that where my lowest point is. So the lowest point on this poppy head, if I look at it, is here. And probably the one next to it is quite low. And this one here is quite low. So I can see more or less where I think that's going to flow. What I do is I mix various colours together to give me slightly varying tops. So this one, as you can see, has got a little bit more yellow in it and I quite like that more acidic green colour of the glass on this one. And then you can see where it's touched the oxide on the drip down that it's changed the colour of that glass. So what I was saying about trying to keep the oxide off the heads, this glass on the top here has been altered on its drips by the oxide that's on the body of the poppy. Um, as you can probably tell, I quite like um, turquoise. <laughs> Actually, they're all turquoise. They're all turquoise. I, I don't know why. Yours doesn't have to be turquoise, but I like them in turquoise. So I do tend to use those, those sorts of colours. So when I'm mixing glass, um, don't mix up too much because you can't unmix it. So you can't take each individual colour um, away. So this in this pot, there's just a little bit of um, glass left over from the last one I made. So I'm just going to stick that in there and start off with that. And then I take a colour palette of what I want to um, use. So and I use, as I say, some are opaque and some are clear. Now these frits, um, they're not sharp because they've been tumbled. If you're using sharp glass, please mind your fingers. Um, so I just take a little pot and as I say, I just put a, put a bit in, you know, I can make more, but I can't unmake. Um, this one is a really lovely dark green, which is a bullseye frit called Adventurine. Um, this one is blue steel blue um, that one is a slightly slightly um, smaller um, grade of this one's my favorite as you can see because it's nearly empty so um, I've probably had this for about oh, 15 years so I shall probably have to bite the bullet and buy some more so yes I do use a lot of turquoise in my work um, I find it's a sort of a, a color that agrees with me so um, and then I'm going to use, this one is called teal green. This one is more opaque. So I'm, I'm adding opaque glasses as well as the clear because it gives it more depth. Um, and this one's a lovely peppermint green, which is actually called mint. Um, and again, that one is an opaque glass. So it's, that that's not going to show any light through it. So it'll give it a bit more depth. Um, and then I've got some, I'm going to use some of this yellow because this gives me the uh, the more acidic green colors so um, I'm just going to, to break a little bit in there because I'm using this confetti glass um, I can actually just just break it with my fingers you might be looking at that thinking well I'm not going to do that but having worked in class it doesn't frighten me anymore um, so I'm just going to use a little bit of this yellow just to make it pop a little bit more because I want a little bit of pop in it um, and then I think I might just use, I think this is a slightly different yellow, paler, paler yellow. So I'm just going to put a bit of that in there. OK, so it's a little bit like a cocktail, bit of this, bit of that. Um, and I'm, I'm using this little pot just to mix it up. And what I end up with is that. OK, I hope you can see that without me tipping it out of the bowl. Um, so this is going to melt completely. So it really doesn't matter if you mix it or not because it is going to completely melt. And what I want to do is I want to put it on the top of here because this poppy head has segments in it. So you can see that the veining on the top will create a, 
a segment for the glass to sit into, I do need to make sure that I have put the glass. Usually, I should say, I do tend to put the glass into the top of the poppy heads when they are in the kiln. So once I have packed the kiln, um, the layer of the kiln that this is going to go into, then I would pour the glass onto the poppy head in the kiln because they're quite difficult to move around once they've got all this glass floating around on the top of them. And if you're not going to um, fire it straight away and it's up on a shelf and you're moving it around all the time, then the glass is quite vulnerable to being knocked and lost. So what I tend to do is mix the glass up, stick the pot on the top of the poppy and then wait until I put it in the kiln. So, but for, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm making sure that there is enough glass in each pod to make sure that you know I will end up with some glass in the top if it pools and draws down the side I want to make sure that I am left with something on the top and that it doesn't all disappear um, this one's probably quite a good example of not enough glass so it has pooled right in the center but as you can see I didn't put a lot of glass on because I was a bit worried that it was going to go everywhere um, and that one hasn't got quite enough glass on it. It could really do with a bit more. So do remember in your head that um, the glass is going to flatten completely. So what I've done, if I pull the camera a little bit, you can see, um, is that I have filled up each portion with a reasonable amount of clay. Oh, sorry, of glass. Now, this section here that you can see, um, that is definitely going to go. So I, you know, I need to make sure there's enough glass on the top for it to flow down if it wants to. And that section there is, is definitely going to go. So again, I'm just going to pop a little bit more in that section and possibly this one will go i i don't think this one will go because it's too high can you see the difference this is holding too high and this over this side is flatter here so i think if i was to guess where it's going to flow i'd say it would go from here and from here and from here but probably not from here or here or here um so make sure there's enough glass on it um, for you to make sure that it actually has enough to to move and then I'm just going to stick some of this yellow on the top um, just because I haven't got a lot of yellow actually mixed in so that is it I'm done so as I say when it goes into the kiln make sure please that you put it on a sacrificial cookie um, and you know the glass if it will flow down the outside you are going to have glass coming right off of the top, right down the side and pooling around the bottom, okay? So if that happens and you're left with a great big pool of glass, if it's on a sacrificial cookie, it doesn't matter. Just knock the cookie off with a hammer, okay? So that is um, part two of the Sculptural Poppy Head tutorial done. So thank you for coming along and I hope it's been useful. I hope that you will send me some pictures of what you're making. Um, and as I've said before, you don't have to make them into poppy heads. You can use the um, technique of the hand building to just make your own um, imaginary seed heads or seed, you know, proper seed heads in, in nature. Have a look around, see what you can find. You can also obviously applique um, pieces onto the surface, any of your choice. So, I mean, if you wanted to make something with, you know, sort of, more thorns or something you could actually applique the thorns on so this is how I do it there are obviously millions of ways to do everything as usual um, but I'm grateful that you come along and in, enjoy the ride um, I have opened an Etsy shop so um, I'll put the link for the Etsy shop on um, if you'd like to take a look I'd be grateful um, I'm starting to try and sell my work a little bit more uh, than I might have done in the past because of course the studio is closed and there are no students here at the moment so usually very busy with students but at the moment in lockdown 
um, the students aren't here. So I am trying to uh, build up the sales if I can. So everybody, thank you again for watching. Much appreciated. My own website to have a look at courses and things is www.thepottery.com thepotterycorner.co.uk so do have a look over there in the meantime everybody keep yourself safe and well and we'll hope that it's not so cold on the next one bye for now